Katie from Vintage and Vinyls. I'll be spinning some rockin' 50s records every week here on my channel, as well as showing you some cool Coca-Cola collectibles and other neat vintage finds. Stay tuned. This is Katie with Vintage and Vinyls back with another great video for you today. This is a collaboration with the Antique Nomad. I saw on his channel he was inviting everyone to do a show off your bunker. So today, while we're all stuck at home and uh, in need of something to watch, I'm going to be showing you some of my collections from around my home. This is my Coca-Cola wall with all my Coca-Cola trays, and I featured all of the trays up close in a different video on my channel, so you guys can go check that out. This is a Coca-Cola print advertisement. I have quite a few of these around my home, and I just think they're wonderful. The graphics are so cool. And I do believe this is from a Life magazine, and you can still see the address of the person um, that got this magazine from way back when. And up top, uh, I have a um, 1960s fishtail Coca-Cola sign that I bought from Misty Pate over at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter. Very, very cool sign. Down here, I have a really unique family piece. This is a 1916 Red Eye Singer sewing machine and this belonged to my great grandmother the drawers are still chalked full in fact i can't even get a lot of them open um, with buttons and thread and all kinds of neat things so this is very very special and i do have a 1940s springless postal scale um, it's kind of amazing to think that so many war letters probably uh, were sat upon the scale to be weighed. Um, I love this, and the graphics are really cool. Um, I have a couple of bowls here. that This one belonged to my great-grandmother. I love uh, the etching on the side. I'm not sure the maker. Now, I do know this one's Fostoria, and this was a pickle dish that was given to my grandmother. Pickle or maybe nuts um, for her wedding, which I love. Um, and then this is a Fostoria uh, crown um, candy dish. And there's my grandma. Over here, I have more Coca-Cola stuff. Um, I have a couple of older bottle openers here. Um, I have a Coca-Cola Betty Girl tip tray. Um, and then on top, I have a Coca-Cola sign. Now, this is from 1933, and it has a really neat story. I bought this from a seller on eBay, and I was really, really hesitant. Uh, but I did a lot of research, and I did feel like it was a good buy. The price was phenomenal. I only paid $100 for this, which is a steal. If you guys know anything about Coca-Cola signs, they can go upwards of $900, even... Um, the more rougher ones um, can go for a lot too, especially if they're rare. And this seller just really didn't know a lot about these and he was trying to get rid of them because his neighbor's old barn washed away and all these signs were stuck on the inside of the barn because apparently whoever built it way back when used these for insulation inside the barn and he was trying to get rid of them and I actually had the sign authenticated by a Coca-Cola sign expert and he did tell me that it is real. It looked and appeared to be real to me but I wanted just to be sure. Um, and on the bottom it says Coshocton, Ohio, American Artworks Inc. So this is a rare Coca-Cola sign that was produced by American Artworks Inc. Um, they did a lot of the trays, but this sign is from 1933, and it is just amazing. Now, at the beginning of the year, I made a trip to New York, which is one of my favorite places to go, and I got these two signs from an architectural salvage yard. Um, it's called Old Good Things, and they go into a lot of factories and pull things out, and this sign here is a multi-mite substation sign. Now, my guess is that it was probably on like a circuit breaker panel or something. I'm not really sure, but it's from 1947. Very cool. And this is a TMT tax NYC license plate that came off of a bigger truck. They would tax uh, delivery trucks, and that was the TMT tax. 
This here I got from an antique store where I live in Florida. And the guy made this out of a ship lamp. Um, it's from the Cold War era. And this was on a ship that was used by the U.S. Navy. And then eventually the ship was moved to a private owner, bought by a private owner, and for some reason eventually had to be demolished. So the guy went on and got this lamp, and it's just very cool. Um, I don't know if you can see here, but it does have its original um, sticker there. And I just think that's amazing with all the etching and really cool. I love industrial pieces. And this is a Hospitality Can Be So Easy 1952 Coca-Cola Company ad that was in a magazine that I had framed. And I do have a Seattle Starbucks um, painting um, that was done by a local artist in the Seattle Pike Place Market. Down here on this little table, I have a really neat collection of glassware. And a lot of this belonged to my grandmother. This is a Faustoria piece she got for her wedding. And um, this cup is a little, I think it's a child's cup, but it belonged to uh, my great grandmother. And she might have used it as a kid. And then, you know, they repurpose things. But grandma says she remembers this being in the sugar um, at her, her house. So very cool. This plate matches the pitcher, but this I got at a Goodwill for 43 cents on half off day. And it was a super find. I never find anything at our Goodwill. So I was really excited about that. And then I have some typewriter tins sitting inside some old, um, coasters. These would have fit like champagne glasses. These belong to my grandmother as well. She got as a wedding gift. And here I have some uh, Faustoria crown collection, uh, not crown, I'm sorry, coin collection um, vase here with a little vinegar container with the glass stopper. Really neat. Okay, onward to my kitchen. Now my kitchen and my living room are sort of all together, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you everything I have um, here. This is my wall of copper goodies. I love copper things. I do not really care for the farmhouse style, but I love copper and uh, this is very cool. These are copper jello molds. Um, I do know that if you get the molds that don't have this um, rim folded over here, they, they actually fold that over a wire and, and that's how they make the sides of some of the jello molds. So if you get these that don't have that, they're supposedly more collectible and nicer. I'm not really sure if that's 100% true, but I love the different molds. This is actually an escargot pan for snails. I think it came from France. And then down here, one of my favorite pieces is this berry colander that has ball and claw feet on it. Now these scoops here came from a man that owned a candy store um, and he got these and sold them at his antique booth. Um, I, I don't know that he actually owned the store, maybe his grandfather did, but he said that they came from a candy store. So they are older and they're very, very cool. All right, moving into the living room, I have a couple of um, things over here. Now, this is a Coca-Cola 1950s um, soda jerk cat, and I got this for $2, believe it or not, at an antique um, booth inside of a architectural salvage yard. And uh, I love these old paper Coca-Cola items. They're cool because paper just really didn't survive as well as like the bottles and the crates and the coolers did. So it makes it more uh, rare. I guess you could say, and I've seen these go online for a lot of money, so I think $2 was a good price. Here I have a Coca-Cola 25 cents um, bottle holder, and it is aluminum, and it says Property Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Now this one has the 25 cents in the corner, so if you look this up in Petretti's Guide, this one is a little bit harder to find, and the paper is missing, so I only paid 
$20 for it on eBay, but still a really good find. Here I've got some of my favorite printer's trays with a lot of antique goodies inside. I got these at a local antique mall, and I love that these are not just the drawers. They actually would swing out sideways, and you can see the little mechanism here, which I think is so cool. A lot of these keys um, have come from different antique stores, but a few of them actually came from my grandfather's office and where he worked. And I had a key that just fell on the floor so let me see if I can find it for you guys, but it's a special key. Oh boy, I am so sorry. While you're down here though, you can look at my Westinghouse fan. <laughs> this key uh, has the tag still on it and it says key to old ladies bathroom. So I think that that's a really special key and neat. Okay, up here, um, these tins I'm going to talk about in a future video, but I do have some watchmakers tins, some smooth on irons, some Kodak film tins, really neat miniature tins. And then these keys that are on the side here belonged to my great grandmother. They were the keys to her house. And uh, I can't believe my grandmother kept them for all those years, but still, really cool with the original string. Just amazing. <laughs> Down here, I have a lathe lamp that I got from a seller on eBay. And this came from a factory, and I looked up the maker's mark. It doesn't have a company, but it has a series of, of numbers. And this lamp is from 1933. It is so cool. It has the original cord. I did check out the cord. It was totally safe. As far as I know, everything is good. I've had this lamp on and I've had no problems with it for about a year now. So my guess is it's just fine. And on top of uh, the, the, the lamp is sitting on top of this table <clears throat> that I made out of an old suitcase. On my TV stand, I have a lot of cool items. Here is a antique uh, 1900s camera. It's a Connolly camera, and this belonged to my great grandfather. It's in wonderful shape, and I love the, the wood and the patina of the old leather. It's such a cool, cool piece. And I'm really glad Grandma saved these things because I'm really enjoying them now. I do have a big collection of glass insulators, and this one is a Brookfield. Uh, I am waiting for a book to come in the mail so that I can learn more about the insulators. But uh, I do see Brookfield a lot, so I believe that is a common one. And I love the amber color of this. This one's made in the USA is what it says. Really cool. These bottles here are antique medicine bottles and they belonged to my grandfather's cousin. And he, um, his, it's my, my grandfather's cousin's husband is what I'm trying to say. And he was a pharmacist and these were his bottles from the pharmacy. And this is a Unicap multivitamins bottle. And on the back, it still has all the amazing old graphic print there. And then on the top, it has a glass stopper, which does mean that it's older, and it has these dimples inside. Now, I have a bottle book, and I have started to look these up so I can find out more information. This one here says Pyrex, so it is um, an older piece because it has, like I said, the glass stopper. Man, that's really heavy. Wow, just amazing. So on the bottom of my TV stand, I'm going to come over here and show you this Coca-Cola um, cooler that I have. Now this cooler is made by Cavalier, and Cavalier made a lot of Coca-Cola's um, vending machines back in the day. And it does have a Coca-Cola bottle uh, opener on the side, and then down at the bottom here, and I don't know if I can show you guys or not, but it has a spout where you can drain the excess uh, water out of the cooler. 
Uh, this cooler is, I believe, from the 1950s, and there's not a lot of them that I know of. It's not even listed in Petretti's Guide, but I have found it online at some Coca-Cola auctions, and it's just a neat piece. Really cool. I got it at an antique store and paid uh, $40 for it. This is a standard stamp carousel. I love the industrial look and the graphics of standard. I hope one day to find some uh, antique stamps to go on the carousel. Up here, I have more tens, and I shared some of these typewriter tens in a previous video, so you guys can go back and check that out. And I have some coins I've collected from my travels. There are some photos I've taken. And then here is a really neat piece. This is a Coca-Cola uh, lettering stamp um, from a printing press. And uh, this is probably, I'd say, maybe from the 40s, from the research I can find on it, and the wood. Um, and it does have this felt backing, but it's a really cool piece. And I got this from a dealer that I know at a local antique store, and he saves a lot of unique Coca-Cola pieces for me. There are some more glass insulators, and here's a Coca-Cola pouch, uh, pouch, I'm sorry, a patch that would have been ironed on to a delivery truck driver's uniform. It is uh, from the 1950s, very cool. And I have some things I've collected from my travels, like this came from Argentina, it's a mate cup, and I got this pair in Oberama Gal, and this little jade bear in Alaska. And this is unique and special to me because it's my grandfather's tape measure. And he was an electrical engineer, and he carried these in his pocket all the time. I mean, I, I could never see Grandpa growing up without pens, pencils, and tape measures. So I love this. This came from his shop. And these items also were found in his workshop. This is a Polarius Drift Site. I know, such a long name, but this is from World War II, and it was used by the Navy to calculate um, certain nautical uh, distances and different things like that. Um, it does have a piece that's missing. There's supposed to be like a taller piece, but uh, this is all I have of it. And this is a uh, old lamp light um, from a 1970s, um, machine that was used to show slides, so like a slide projector, and it says GE on it. Here I have a Coca-Cola ice pick. Now these are relatively common, and I picked this up for about five dollars from my buddy who saves Coca-Cola stuff for me at the local antique store, and it's a very cool piece. This is a pair of opera glasses that belong to my great-grandmother, and you can actually see her name still on the case. Um, so let me show you that here. But really cool piece of family history, and I am glad to have these. Now down here, I wanted to share with you something that's really cool that I recently just picked up. And this is a kit from Old Dog Miller. But this is a Coca-Cola uh, bottle carbonation tester kit that was from a factory. And on the inside here, this broke um, actually when it came in the mail and the seller was nice enough to refund me. So I was able to actually go buy some replacements and I was able to get the exact same ones that broke. So that's really good. But it has all these Pyrex and um, this one is not Pyrex, it's Kimax um, beakers inside. This really cool plastic Coca-Cola um, tube. And in here is a carbonation pressure gauge. And on the back here, it says that it was copyrighted in 1958. So this is really cool. And in this thing, and I'm not going to open it because it's really hard to open because it's so old, but it has a, a thermometer inside, one of those old glass thermometers that probably still has 
the mercury inside of it, but oh well. <laughs> what you gonna do with an old piece like this? So whoever old dog Miller was, he did a great job saving this and keeping good care. Man, this just won't close. Yes, I'm saving the broken pieces for now just because I want to have some sort of reference of what was in there. So I just keep that under the chair just to add something interesting down here. Okay, so I'm going to show you the last couple of things in my living room. And we're going to go over to my record player in just a minute. But I want to show you guys this here. I made this lamp uh, myself, and this here came from uh, Alex over at Chapter 2 Vintage Co. I bought this from her, so shout out to Alex. Thank you so much. This is an awesome piece, and I've got an old cigar box down on the bottom. But this is what I really wanted to show you. This is a carbonation bottle and a soda water bottle, and I got this from old good things in new york city now what's amazing about this is when i picked it up the price tag said ten dollars and i couldn't believe it because these go for hundreds of dollars now i realized you know based on the subject matter the kind of bottle and the condition and all of that really affects its price but i still had never seen one for ten dollars so I took it up to the cash register and the guy looked at me and he looked at the price and he said, oh, I don't think this is right. And so he called the manager and the manager said, yes, $10. So I can't believe I bought it and brought it all the way back on an airplane nonetheless. So really cool piece. This is one of my favorite Coca-Cola pieces in my collection, probably next to that printer's block I showed you. But this is a safety first drink coca-cola brass uh, metal plate that would go in the ground and it is dated 4 11 1933 these were used around schools and at crosswalks just to teach kids how to safely cross the street now during the war they pulled a lot of these up to use them for metal i do believe there was dr pepper ones um, as well but I bought this from a guy online who runs an architectural salvage yard, and I only paid $20 for it. And these go for like $80 now online, so that was a super steal. And then right above all these wonderful things, I have some Coca-Cola paper items that I've had framed. And this is a Coca-Cola cigar band. Now, Coca-Cola did make cigars, and they made gum, but they didn't produce a lot of them, and the gum and the cigars can go for thousands of dollars online. But I bought this from a guy for $3. The guy had no clue what he had, and I am a lucky owner of a Coca-Cola cigar band. Up here is a Coca-Cola paper label. These were on bottles. Now this is a more rare Coca-Cola paper label, and you can look it up in Petretti's guide, but it has some markings here that make it different than some of the other labels, and uh, I just love this. Okay, on to my record player. This is my record cabinet, and as you guys have seen before, I have quite a, a few uh, 50s doo-wop records, but I wanted to show this again, and this is a 1916 Victrola uh, metal plate that came off of the Victor talking machines and I know that's not really old as far as Victor talking machines go but I just love it and it really does complete this record cabinet here. Now inside um, I have some Victrola record tens, uh, needle tens with the nipper dog on it and then I have an Edison gold mold record a container with the record inside. Amazing these survived because they are this kind of thinner cardboardy paper. So that is really cool. Um, one of my favorite framed Coca-Cola things is right here by my record um, player. And this is, it's the Madison Time, do the Madison Coca-Cola paper guide for doing the Madison. And on the back it has 
more details of the steps, but here you can see just a little brief preview. And then I also love that it has King Coke. Um, and given that the, the label here has the fishtail sign, I do believe this is from the 1960s. And I just love this piece. It also has bubble up um, on it as well. And I've got some other Coca-Cola uh, framed pieces here. These are from magazines. This one's from the Saturday Evening Post. And I believe that one's also from Life Magazine, if I'm not mistaken. This ceiling tile came out of an old house in Savannah. And I've paired it here with black pipe. And then I made um, a chain to hang it on. And it's going through a 19th century old pulley uh, from a factory that I got at a local antique store. So the last thing I want to share with you guys is my table in the center of the room. And this is a wire spool I pulled off the side of the road and made it into a table. And on top I have some cool uh, Coca-Cola paper things. I'm getting ready to send this picture to my grandmother for Easter since we can't be together. I want her to have a little something, so excuse that there. But this, this bowl matches that other bowl that I showed you. Um, this was my great-grandmother's. And then on top of the cigar box here, I have a couple of books. Now these belonged to um, my grandfather's cousin, Evelyn Nunley, and these are my great-grandfather's glasses. And inside the books, they have poems, but some of the graphics are just really amazing inside. And they are in a little bit of some rough shape, but you can see that uh, there's even writing inside from some of my family. So really, really cool piece of history here. I'm trying to find the book that has the lithograph painting inside, or lithograph art, but I can't find that. But I'll show these up close in another video, so look for that. Here, I have a really cool box, and this, I didn't know what it was, and then I did some research, and I found out that this wooden box actually was used in a commercial setting, and it held weights for a measuring scale, like you'd see in a candy store, or maybe somewhere the grocery store might have had this, but it's such a cool little box. Um, and I love anything with some wood patina that's a little bit rougher, and uh, I just think that's beautiful. I have here a butt splicer. This was used for film. It's probably not that old, but I love the industrial look of it anyway, and it sits here on my spool table. Now, these are some paper things that I pulled um, out of this little bowl here that I keep on the table to show you all. This is a Coca-Cola lithographed um, ink blotter. Well, it says the Litho Company. I don't know that this is actually lithographed, but I just wanted to show it to you all because I think the graphics are amazing. It features Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower, um, and it says 58 million bottles equals 7,084 miles. So that's a cool piece of paper history of Coke. And then this was given away um, as kind of like a coupon for a free bottle of Coke. It says, redeem this card whenever Coca-Cola is sold in bottles, or wherever Coca-Cola is sold in bottles. And it says, compliments of the Springfield Coca-Cola Bottling Company. So I love this. And then these pieces are really unique. I haven't seen any other thing um, like them, and I got them online. This is a um, bottling plant tour guide, and I think this is from the 1940s, and I say that because of the Sprite Boy, and he was only used by Coke during that time period. So there he is, um, and it's a unique piece. The graphics are super cool. So it shows how Coca-Cola was bottled, and then on the back, it has these graphics. Um, let me flip it around like people um, driving in a car having Coke. And this one is people uh, at lunch in a diner 
uh, enjoying Coke. There's all different graphics on the back. And this one is sort of similar. I think it's from the 1960s, given the fishtail sign here and that can. Um, and it has the starburst, which is very cool. And it has some of the same graphics on it. But I love this this piece here. Here's people bowling. Isn't that cool? Very, very cool. And I can show these up close, guys, in another video if you want to see some of the graphics on them. Now, this I just did a video on, so I'm not going to share too much about it. But this is a Coca-Cola in wartime record. And this was used um, at the bottling plants to tell the bottlers what Coca-Cola was going to do during the wartime and how it was going to chip in and help the war efforts. So this is um, very cool. It has the vice president talking, and I just love it. I also just recently got this tin, and again, I'm going to do a video on tin, so you guys will see that soon, but I love the graphics um, on this, and it is a rare, harder-to-find tin for fasteners from New York City. So very cool. Well, thank you guys. This is all I have to share with you guys today. I hope you are doing well. Please stay safe, stay in, and binge YouTube.